Greetings programs today on the grid. We have a user. How do you increase patching success in a 24 seven shop? Let the battle begin. Welcome back to Tanium Tech Talks. I'm your host, Ashley McGlone. I know we've got some Tron fans out there. I've heard from you. And special thanks to my coworker, Josh, who scored this Tron jacket for me down in Florida. Uh, so keep your eyes on the calendar for 1010 this year. That's binary 1010, right? October 10th is a special day for Tron fans this year. But today's show is also extra special because we have a genuine Tanium user to tell us about their experience. Now, their 24-7 always-on business environment, their patch success rate with Tanium went from 45% to 97% after Tanium. Wow. So that's what we're going to explore today, what it's like to be a day in the life of a real Tanium user. So help me welcome Dennis to the show. Uh, Dennis, please introduce yourself for our audience. Hello, my name is Dennis. Um, I have about 20 years of IT experience going from the help desk role all the way to system admin to now being an analyst. I uh, worked for several business agencies and using Tanium has helped me out and helped our environment very um, being compliant. Well, Dennis, it's great to have you on the show today. So let's just kind of start from the beginning. How did you get started with Tanium? So starting off with Tanium um, for a business unit, I started off really just doing third party patching deploy, the deploy module with Tanium. And we did, we, with Tanium's scanning tool, it was able to identify the software that we're using to which ones to, to, to know which ones were being updated. Moving along to other business units, I was able to now from more restrictive environment to go ahead, it's yours, it's your playground, make it work. Um, so to be able to now have the power to use deploy module, uh, patch module, maintenance windows, uh, things of that nature, I was able to bring our compliance numbers up. That's fantastic. So if, if I heard what you said there correctly, you started in some other company in a smaller division and they had, they only let you do certain things, but then you got this new role, which kind of opened the doors and you said they, they just kind of gave you the keys of Tanium and said, have fun. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it was. Um, we're using uh, another vendor to provide those services. Uh, contract ended, and they said, Tanium will be our tool now, and go ahead and have at it. Make it work. Oh, that sounds fun, man. So so uh, what did you use to learn Tanium as a new user? You guys have some good documentation, but what really helped me out, Ashley, was actually a YouTube video I watched with you, and uh, you had another... Um, person on that I was talking about zero touch deployment. And when I heard zero touch deployment, that really excited me because again, from the previous business unit, I was doing line item, line item, line item. But to watch that video that you hosted and he showed me, you could bundle this all up. I said, I got to do that. So that's what got me started. Yeah, that, that video was with Jason Wasser, one of our patch SMEs. And that is the number one video of Tanium Tech Talks ever. And continues and like it's two years old and people still keep finding it. And it's great because yeah, it, it's, it's that zero touch patching is just amazing. Um, so how did you go from 45% patch compliance to high nineties, man, first off, congratulations. That's an amazing accomplishment. How did you do that? Again, uh, through the video that you were hosting, I watched that documentation, I had a little knowledge of setting up maintenance windows so I don't make things because the previous business uh, organization said, you got to set this at 8.30 p.m. so you don't mess anything up. Knowing and kind of learning about maintenance windows, I can set it what time I want because it won't hit the computers because they're on a maintenance window. So learning all those things from maintenance window, kind of like building up. Um, if you look at the the way things work in Tanium, you build from the bottom up your maintenance windows, your deployments, and then your your schedules, and then you deploy the what you want to deploy to your environment. All right. So I know from before the show we were talking, and you said you today you work in a twenty four seven always on kind of business environment. You know, you're talking about 
maintenance windows. How do you do maintenance windows in a 24-7 shop? The way the business unit has uh, developed their way of doing things is that they would identify the machines and their importance, and I would basically have different levels. So you have your test environment, your low priority, your high priority, and your manual. So using that criteria alone, they can go and input a tag, a custom tag onto a device, and that will be an identifier for me to put in this perfect schedule that they want a certain time, uh, when your maintenance windows. So to be able to use those custom tags as well that I can use with Tanium, I can identify the machines according to what their wants are. That's a great strategy. I've heard of that from other customers as well. So you you defined maybe four maintenance windows, it sounds like, and then you let people control their own tagging. How do they apply those tags? The tag would come from us, or some of them were um, admins of uh, Tanium, so they would do it themselves. Uh, so moving forward, we would have a little more control over it, so they can request what needs to be tagged in the machines, and then we can tag it for them. I'm guessing... Uh... I'd like to say, working for Tanium, that everything worked great the first try. I'm guessing that there took some some uh, tuning and so forth, some troubleshooting maybe. What kind of challenges did you have to solve along the way? Tanium works the way it's supposed to work. The challenges will be getting every department and organizations to work together to give me the information I need to then apply it with Tanium. Um, even unfortunately right now, some one of the business units I work for, they keep on changing it on me. So I'm trying to make it more simple for me. They can go and retag them. I'm going to give them the, um, the right to go and retag the machine if they need to. So, so walk us through, what does a patch t Tuesday look like? We just, depending on when you're watching this video, we just crossed a patch Tuesday. Uh, what does that look like, uh, for you? It, it sounds like you've got the zero touch thing going. Is there any hands on or... Is it literally set it and forget it now? Currently, it's still a little hands-on because unfortunately, they'll keep on changing some of those things for me. So I have to ensure the servers are getting patched correctly, kind of watch the team deployment do its process. And I also work with the server team that will I can kind of see once it turns orange, it's waiting for a restart. And then at that point, I can relay that message to the server admins and they can go ahead and restart the machines. I know previously, as we were getting ready for the, the show, you said something about restarts, you know, uh, in a 24-7 shop, that can be a business disruption. Um, how do you manage those restarts in a 24-7 shop? Well, for me, we have different criteria. That, again, with that, uh, talking to different business units, they would say, this is what we want. So they would understand low priority and high priority, automatic restarts. Anything that's manual and more uh, touchy, someone has to go in there and restart them manually. Um, um, from my point of view, I've done my end or Tanium's end where we patched it. Now it's going to be up to the applications team or server admin to go ahead and do their and perform what they need to perform to get the server up and running. So that's a lot of patching. Uh, you mentioned deploy when you first started. What are you doing with deploy these days? Deploy is the same thing. Um, I like Tanium for identifying what kind of um, updates are needed in our environment. So I just go in and get those, make, get those software and then create a bundle for that. And once I create a bundle, I can deploy it out. I have different types of criteria from development to production. Um, and once it hits production, I send out to all of our machines. Do you happen to use any of the deploy self-service for that? I have played around with that. It looks cool. Uh, I like the idea from, I think, one of the videos or articles that I read that we haven't got there yet. It's something we're looking into. Uh, our, our test machines do it. They're not aware, but I would like to implement that in the future. Yeah, so I have to guess, uh, with all this hands-free patching, um, what has what kind of a difference has that made in your work-life balance? I mean, we always hear the stories. We've Many of us have lived those stories of after hours patching on evenings and weekends. What has this meant for you and your team as far as like what your work-life balance looks like now? It's a lot better, way better. Um, trying to, uh, uh, you know, fortunately and unfortunately for the, uh, for the organization, I have to stay to kind of monitor it because they they change stuff all the time. Even though they have the lateral movement to change the priorities, it's great, but I'm just one of those sticklers. I gotta make sure it works. Um, so if I see a deployment that turns red, look into it, uh, things of that nature. But yes, it's giving me some time um, to go ahead and do other things and uh, look at other options to, to start working on for, for, for our agency. 
you know, we, we talk about that sometimes is how it, it's not, you know, we know there's always going to be work to do, but now you can focus on more high value work. Uh, I'm, I'm curious too, um, there's a lot of different reporting and dashboards. Uh, what kind of reports do you use in Tanium and who do you share those with? Um, currently, we're still developing that. There are some built-in uh, reports that we could use. Um, I'm starting to slowly get into how to modify, look for the criteria I'm looking for. I really like Interact. I'm looking into that. Uh, my main focus was just patching or deploy and uh, patch modules. So now, now with that extra time I have, I can go and start exploring how to make these better reports. How can I show this to management? How could I show it to maybe a business unit? And this is where you can improve. I'm curious what feedback you've gotten from the business and from management. They had a, a previous way of doing patching. You've got a new way that you've been able to do it now with Tanium. Um, and your numbers look a lot better. Uh, what, what are you hearing from up the chain at your company? What I've heard up the chain was that since it's working so well for the current business unit, they have elevated me up to do it for the overall business unit. So uh, with the numbers that I was able to show through Tanium and using Tanium, they now have put me in a different position now that I'm going to make this work for the whole environment. That's a, a bit of a promotion of responsibility anyway. And so that's good to see that it's, it's working and getting attention. Yeah. So we've got a lot of people that watch the show from beginners to advanced. What would you recommend for people just getting started with Tanium? How, what tips would you have for them as they're getting started? Um, again, if they just watch that Vero Zero Touch, for me, it answered all my questions, the majority of my questions, how to make this work. And it depends on your, what you guys, what, what they would like to do. Do they want to focus on patching, focus on third party? You kind of got to set where you want to start first. Um, but yeah, that video, I would say for me, solved all my problems, all my questions. And maybe that's a video you could probably link down below and they can look at that and we'll, it'll just answer all their questions. Yeah, you know, you've watched the episodes before. Yeah, we're going to link that show for you down here below, that Patch Zero Touch. There's a whole series. If you just go to YouTube and put in Tanium uh, Patch FAQ, you'll see a bunch on Tanium uh, Patch and Deploy there in that series. Well, Dennis, uh, this has been uh, fun just to talk to somebody in the real world who's using Tanium. Thank you for coming on the show, too. Your account team reached out to me and said, hey, you need to talk to this guy. He's done some amazing stuff with Patch. So I just want to congratulate you again on what you've been able to accomplish. Thank you for the invitation and, and doing this. I thank Tanium for making my job easier. Um, and yeah, you guys have a great support team. I have full access, do what I need to do, talk to the people I need to talk to. Tanium tells me what to do. I can run it, no problems, no questions. Here, Tanium, here's your stuff. Come back to me. Team Sports, great. Get all my answers that I need. Fantastic. Well, that's a great shout out to Tanium Support. Yeah, those are uh, a lot of my peers out there who are supporting customers. And, and we work hard to make sure you've got a good experience. So thank you for that feedback. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I, I like Tanium. I love Tanium. So, uh, Compared to what we're using, Tanium's, I'm going to say it's top notch. And for those of you who are watching today, uh, again, check out those show notes below here on YouTube for a link to that uh, episode that Dennis was talking about. And as always, uh, you know, there's an open invitation. If you would like to come on the show and tell folks what you've done with Tanium and what it's, uh, how it's helped you and your job, we'd love to have you on the show. You can ping me on LinkedIn or you can email go at tanium.com. So until next time, go Tanium.